Hi, I'm the Dr. David, and today we'll be discussing intelligent design. You know, in Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi once said, Who is the greater fool, the fool who leads or the fool who follows the fool? The reason I mention that is because intelligent design and forces come in two groups. The first group is the one who goes to a college or university and receives their degree in science. They even have their own special college and universities where they get what I call a pseudo-scientific degree. And those are the ones who lead, and they are called intelligent design believers. The second group is a group that I pity, and they are the ones who follow the intelligent design believers, and they are called the intelligent design followers. And together, they comprise the group which wants us to be forced into doing what they believe and could bring us back to the dark ages, and they are called intelligent design enforcers. Well, today we'll be lucky enough to be hearing from one unknown intelligent design enforcer, and that's coming up next. Well, uh, there's been an effort within the scientific community to censor out information uh, against evolution that proves that evolution may not be as many scientists believe. Uh, there have been uh, many times in which um, evidence that was brought forward to, claim, to uh, bolster the idea of evolution turned out to be fraudulent. So what oh, great. So what I can we, see where um, this is going. What argue for is to teach the controversy. Don't censor out the facts that go against evolution, uh, such as the famous uh, pig's tooth, uh, the, the tooth that was claimed to be a, a, an example of a, uh, a prehistoric man and turned out to just be the tooth of a pig. There are uh, numerous examples of that. A pig's like tooth? So Am I the only the one around here getting hungry? Rather than try and censor out the information that shows yes. that evolution you know, is, is questionable. There is no evidence of evolution from one species to another. There's microevolution within a species, but not going from one species to another. No really. evidence. Actually, Quite here, in hominids here, alone, we have Australopithecus, Homo erectus, Heilbergensis, uh, really uh, I'm starting to get tongue tied, Archaic, uh, Homo of, uh, sapiens. The they just don't want to know the facts. They won't even allow discussion about the controversy that says uh, that we can't even discuss uh, any evidence that might show that evolution is questionable. Right. Uh, scientists are now claiming that they're the only ones that can speak on this issue. And yet when people who look at the evidence uh, go to the Smithsonian uh, Museum on Natural History, and when we look for where's the evidence to show evolution from one species to another, all we find are drawings, illustrations. There aren't the uh, actual material evidence showing it. So, while there the are evidence is say that in the museum, can speak but on uh, this, intelligent what design enforcers don't want you to know that. A, um, an isolated uh, community and saying that we're the ones, uh, almost like a, it's almost like a religion in which only scientists are allowed to speak and teach on it and to teach everyone else. Evolution else is like a religion. Wow, that's a great what one coming from an intelligent say, design enforcer who, who believes in a creator. Are being censored out, are being blackballed out of the scientific community <laughs> and, not, and being told that the rest of the world cannot listen to them. Excuse Maybe. me. Where is the evidence of um, evolution from one species to another species? The macro evolution. Well, um, you know, and I and I think that's a perfect example of the hostility that those who favor evolution have toward those who don't buy into the idea, who say, "Show us the evidence," and yet those in favor of evolution well, can't show us the evidence that we're I'm, looking I'm for. So is the evolutionists are still lacking the science to back it up? But in, instead, what happens is science that doesn't bolster the case for evolution gets censored out. Such as there is no evidence of evolution from going from one species to another species. If that, if evolution had occurred, then surely, whether it's going from birds to mammals or, or even beyond that, surely there'd be at least birds one to mammals. Birds to mammals. Birds don't evolve into show mammals. Me the carcass. Show me the evidence of uh, the in-between stage from one species to another. <laughs> Evolutionists bear the burden of providing the evidence for uh, those of us who are not scientists to see it. And if the evolutionists had the actual evidence, then it would be displayed in but museums, just, not just in illustrations. Yeah, I mean, so what I go back to, though, I think there is a bit of a, there could be a hidden agenda on the part of those in favor of Darwin. DNA is common among various species, but among human beings, each one of us has distinct DNA. In fact, that's the one, um, um, 
uh, that's one thing that's uh, quite a, a way that, sorry, back up. Um, that's one thing that scientists will use to determine back who up. has committed that's a crime. That's what an intelligent design believe it tells you to do when so you get ahead of DNA yourself. So DNA helps to show mm. that each human being was created individually. I think that this, this, um, this Without effort, genetic differences, there would be no evolution. It's the mutations of the DNA and the RNAs and, and the hydrogen bond-based pairing, which is a prime of, uh, reason uh, for uh, evolution. People which still makes us different in evolution. Now, if evolutionists were so confident in their beliefs, there wouldn't be the effort to censor out information that shows uh, that evolution is still lacking and is questionable. We're oftentimes um, forced by the aggressiveness of those who favor evolution. It's not as if we are hidden from this information that you keep presenting. It's not as if we're uh, it's it's unknown to us because we can't get away from it. It's it's pushed on us all the time. But I think your frustration comes from the fact that so many of us who have seen your information still don't buy into your ideology. Why is it so important to you that everyone believe in evolution? Why do, why do you see, you seem to almost feel like it's dangerous for people to believe that human beings were created uh, individually and with a distinctness and created by a creator. The, the, the challenge in course, America, by a creator, when the she's talking about up, the God of the uh, Bible, is an immoral the book, and the following of the that evidence, immoral book as it is now, by blind cases, faith, which is an school amoral children are only act. being taught about evolution. They're not being taught about the frauds in evolution and the, the uh, lack of evidence in evolution. So it's actually us who are arguing for teaching all the evidence, not just the ones that are favorable to evolutionists, so that we could have a, a, a dialogue without being reduced to ad hominem attacks and accusing others of having hidden secret uh, hostile agendas. The debate over uh, ad hominem evolution attacks. or Obviously, they think if they put a big silly rooms. grin on their and the face from ear to ear, to ear the that they can make it personal and condescending and then nobody will notice. information that promotes one viewpoint, which most of the times that's evolution. It's been a very heavy-handed effort in the United States to clamp down, not allow any teaching that is contrary to evolution and I am um, I think that's why we need variety of people looking at theories and challenging it because if it's one person who's dictating what can be challenged or can or what evidence is substantial or not then we have a dictatorship in science a uh, dictatorship be why does she think they're called intelligent design and in not forces? be hemmed in not be restricted by the current zeitgeist of those who are the the almost the high priests of science well, that if we believe that human beings were created out of love, that is by a loving creator, and uh, has given each one of us not only a material body, but a spirit and a soul, we then are more likely to treat other people with respect. I would like to thank our guest, the unknown intelligent designer, for her time. And I'd like to make a statement, though, an ending statement here. Unfortunately for humankind, uh, that this particular type of biblical mythology was popular right around the time that the written word really was quick I meant to say that they started making multiple copies of the written word and for the most part the stories in the Bible were all stolen from now long forgotten and debunked earlier gods even uh, the, the, the three uh, temptations of Christ were from Buddha which was 500 years earlier a very similar story Anyways, now that it's been written down into one book, people believe, falsely believe, that this book is all about this one God, either Yahweh, Jehovah, or the New Testament Jesus. But it's not. So it's going to be very hard to forget. Also, you know, Darwinism was very cruel. It's a survival of the fittest. But with our civilization, with our knowledge, we can rise above this. We can evolve above this and have a more, a better, ameliorated world. But religion, the Bible, that's immoral. And by its very nature, it'll always be immoral. Anyways, if you believe that the intelligent design creator of the Bible is a god of love, then you just might be an intelligent design enforcer. I'm the Dr. David. Have a great life.